Hey everyone, and glad to see you made it this far. Part 4 here is kind of a bonus video for this 3D printed jet engine model. Being I work on jet engine design for a living, I figured I'd share some of my insight as to some of the key features of the engine and how one operates. Before we start, I just want to clarify that 1. This has nothing to do with work for me, and 2. This isn't a model of any one particular engine. A user by the name of Katia5FTW on Thingiverse posted this model. It's a culmination of his own design work as influenced by various engines. Let's start with jet engine basics. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow is the common description of how these work. I'll break down each of these processes a bit more in the video, but the basics are the fan sucks air in, the compressor squeezes or compresses the air, the combustor adds fuel and ignites the air, and then the high energy air is blown through the turbine and out the back of the engine. You could also add an augmenter or afterburner section to the end, but most commercial engines don't have one of those. This engine is a typical two-spool, high-bypass turbofan engine. The turbofan name comes from the fact that there's turbo machinery with a fan in front of it. Interestingly, you may recognize the word turbo from automotive engines. An automotive turbo is basically a miniature compressor turbine system that gives a boost to your engine. The high bypass terminology comes from the fact that a decent chunk of the air goes through the fan, but not the core. The core is the part that makes up most of the engine. Many military jets, for example, have no bypass, meaning all air goes through the core. The last part of the name is two spool. This means that we have a high pressure spool and a low pressure spool. As you can see, the high pressure turbine, or HPT, drives the high pressure compressor, or HPC. This is done using the high pressure shaft. Alternatively, we have a low pressure shaft, which connects the low pressure turbine back here, all the way up to the fan, up here in the front. These two shafts spin freely of each other, and is done for an efficiency boost. It's most efficient for the shafts to spin at different speeds. Because of these efficiency gains, some companies like Rolls-Royce actually have a three-spool engine. This adds more efficiency, but also increases the weight. Let's hop back to the front of the engine and work our way through each component. We'll start with the fan. On most high-bypass turbofan engines, the fan actually produces a bulk of the thrust for the engine. It slightly compresses the air, but more importantly, the angle of the airfoils create lift. It's not lift as most people think of it, as up, but the angle makes it so that the lift points forward, thus generating thrust. Depending on the bypass ratio, a large portion of the air is then sent back out to ambient air. The rest is brought down into the core of the engine. This starts by going through a compressor. Many engines have a low-pressure compressor, or a booster stage, but we'll ignore that for these purposes as this engine doesn't really have one. The high-pressure compressor, or HPC, is where I've become most familiar through work. The air passes through several stages of spinning rotors, each of which compresses the air a bit. Each stage doesn't do a ton of work, but the pressure ratios quickly multiply into a pretty high pressure ratio. This is where the cool part came in, and this is what blew my mind when I first started learning about jet engines. Between each stage of spinning rotors are stages of stators. The rotors turn the air as the air goes through, and the stators are there to correct the angle so that it enters the next stage at the proper and efficient angle. The amount of correction needed varies with speed though, so stators like the ones in this engine aren't the most efficient. Many modern engines use variable vanes, which actually change their angle based on the current speed, pressure, temperature, and other operating conditions. It's really cool. I could ramble about this all day, so if you have any questions, let me know, or find one of the many other YouTube videos on the subject. So now that the air has made its way through the compressor, it's, well, compressed. Think about it this way. The air has some energy in it. We've now compressed that air into a smaller volume, so the air is now more energy dense. This becomes extremely important in the next steps. After exiting the compressor, we head into the combustor. Here, fuel is added to the air, and a steady, fiery blast heats up the flow to crazy high temperatures. The higher the temperature, the more energy the air has in it, so basically the higher the temperature, the better. Unfortunately, this high temperature can also cause heating issues, as the materials can't handle the extreme heat. This is why you see a lot of special cooling patterns designed into the combustor and some downstream components. Not only does this let some cooling air in, but it also helps with ensuring efficient combustion. Okay, so now we've compressed the air to get it very energy dense, and we've heated it to add even more energy. So now it's time to put this energy to work. First up is the high pressure turbine, or HPT. As the air passes through the turbine, it flows over the rotors, causing it to spin. The HPT is connected by the HP shaft up to the HPC. It's a really cool cycle. Remember, the HPC compresses the air to give it energy for the HPT. 
and the HPT takes that energy to help drive the HPC, so basically they fuel each other. After the HPT, we arrive at the LPT, or the low pressure turbine. Just as with the HPT, as air passes through these stages, work is done on the turbine to spin the LPT. The LPT is then connected all the way back up to the fan, thus spinning the fan. Now we arrive at the exhaust nozzle. Here, whatever energy is left in the system gets dissipated. Basically, this energy is stored in the form of temperature and pressure. The pressure differential between the exit of the engine and the ambient air is what causes some additional thrust. So there you have it, a super simple overview of how a jet engine works. Clearly, in a video of this length, I've only begun to scratch the surface. These are incredibly complex machines, and the tiniest details make a huge difference. If you guys have any other questions about the topic, feel free to hit me up in the comments below or directly on Twitter. Thanks to everyone who's watched this series. Hopefully you all learned something, be it about printing or jet engines. I personally learned a ton about printing while making the model featured here. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop it a like. I don't plan to do a ton of videos like this, but hey, this was fun. So hit me up if you ever want to learn more. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will catch you next time.